45 million pairs of customized eclipse glasses. That's what American Paper Optics figures its factory outside Memphis has turned out. Right now, we're producing over 500,000 eclipse glasses a day. Now, do you understand how big this eclipse will be? CEO John Jarrett. We think of it as the Super Bowl of the sky. So it's so big because we're talking about 300 million people looking at the sky and they all need eye protection. Ready or not, here it comes. Eight days from today, for the first time in 99 years, a solar eclipse will cross the entire continental United States. Its path of totality from Oregon to South Carolina, approximately 70 miles wide, a partial eclipse visible elsewhere. What is a solar eclipse? It's when the moon passes between the Earth and the sun. The darkness is the moon's shadow. When the sun is about halfway or, or three quarters of the way covered, if you have a shade tree around and you look at the sunlight filtering down through the leaves of the shade tree and look down on the ground, you will see crescents on the ground because the leaves act like pinhole cameras. Retired NASA astrophysicist Fred Espinak is known as Mr. Eclipse. Just before totality, uh, the sky starts getting dark and you get one bright bead on the edge of the, of the sun's disk that's called the diamond ring effect. And then the sun's disk is completely covered and the corona is revealed in all its glory. Maybe you've seen those eclipse postage stamps. If you press on one, your body heat makes the eclipse go away and the face of the moon appear. They're Espinac's photos. He's witnessed 27 solar eclipses, met his wife at one. So it should come as no surprise that he lives in the Arizona desert far from city lights in a development called Sky Village, where residents all have their own observatories. Get a good view of, of Saturn in the rings. Wow, I see the rings. Oh. The name for an eclipse chaser like Espinac? Umbrophile, or lover of shadows. I have seen five total eclipses. So my first was in Aruba in 1998. Science writer David Barron is another self-proclaimed umbrophile. It was the most awe-inspiring, I dare say spiritual experience I've ever had. And I say this as a science journalist. Barron's new book, American Eclipse, recalls an earlier era's eclipse sensation. July 29, 1878, the path that the moon's shadow took went right across the Wild West, from Montana Territory down to Texas and dozens of American astronomers headed out to the west to observe that eclipse. The most prominent scientist to come out that year was Thomas Edison. Edison had just invented the phonograph. Even by today's standards, he was a media star. So Edison's involvement in the eclipse definitely helped raise the profile of the eclipse overall. And the very day after he returned from the eclipse, he started work on a new project, and that was the light bulb. The 1878 eclipse was critical to the prestige of a nation not yet taken seriously as a force in science. And was one of those key events that really did lead the country not too much later, by 1900, to be an equal with Europe in terms of science and then really to excel and exceed Europe. So what's this line? Well, this line is the center of the 73 mile wide uh, solar eclipse. As for prime eclipse viewing spots, if the Wild West seemed exotic in 1878, Macanda, Illinois, population 600, might qualify today. Uh, why orange? It's, we only had orange paint. Uh. <laughs> According to Dave Dardis, the path of totality runs right through the workshop where he is making and selling eclipse art happily expecting to cash in on his amazing good fortune that totality here will be longer than almost anywhere else on Earth, two minutes and 40 seconds. And there are going to be hundreds of people wanting to stand on this line, I guess. And if they, if they stand on the line here and they want to wear a funny hat or anything like that, I'm going to charge them money. Ah, uh, and how can you manage that? 
Well, I can tell what a funny hat looks like. It's the probability of not hundreds, but thousands of people showing up in Makanda. Are you excited or are you terrified? I'm more excited than terrified, but a good portion of me is terrified. <laughs> that has volunteer eclipse coordinator Joe McFarland a little panicky. Again, look around you. How many people could fit in this little tiny valley? This is it. This is it. So it's about withstanding the eclipse yes. as opposed to just enjoying it. It is. Now, a little further along the path of totality, Hopkinsville, Kentucky. The message here is bring it on. The economic impact of an anticipated 100,000 visitors, $30 million. In addition to a prime Hopkinsville location to view the shadow of the moon, Casey Jones Distillery is offering moonshine, 100 proof corn liquor, $40 a bottle. We guarantee the lights out. You can have an eclipse anytime you want. You don't have to wait. <laughs> And I assure you, if you have an eclipse with this, it's going to last a lot longer than two minutes and 40 seconds. Well, you actually have gas burners. Arlen Casey Jones makes the stuff by hand in the same kind of still his grandfather, the original Casey Jones, used during Prohibition. Cheers. Cheers. Lights out. <laughs> It is potent. It is potent. Uh. A little moonshine might prepare you for what will be happening nearby in Kelly. The eclipse will coincide with the annual Kelly Little Green Men Festival. The actual encounter took place over here in this little wooded area. Exactly 62 years to the day after Geraldine Sutton Stith's father and 10 other friends and family members claim to have had an alien encounter. They saw this little three, three and a half foot tall being coming out from the woods. And it looked like what? <laughs> well, nothing they'd ever seen before. It had a huge head, huge ears, big glowing eyes. Its little arms almost touched the ground and it was floating on top of the ground. Given the spooky timing, Will they be back? In a way, I would love it to happen because then it would prove it. And in another way, I'm like, oh my God, you know, just, just you can come, but don't take me with you. Let no one say that the great American eclipse will not be memorable. Fred Espinak, Mr. Eclipse, has this advice for anyone seeing a total eclipse for the first time. The thing to keep in mind is not to get so carried away with cameras and stuff that you miss the event itself. Comparing uh, natural phenomena on a scale of one to 10, a partial eclipse might be a three or a four, and a total eclipse is a million. Totality!